Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. They had accused me of lying about my grandfather's death to get out of trouble. They lost about $500. The second story. Bank treated my parents like SH, so instead of closing an account they left $5 in it, and cost the bank way more money managing it over the years before it was eventually closed and turned over to the state. The third story. Got my mother a pension that she was actually awarded in a divorce. My dad had been overpaid for 10 years. Had to answer for it. The first story is... Job accused me of lying so I got revenge. When I was 17 to 18 years old, I got my first retail job. I worked at a children's store that does ear piercings. I'm sure you all know which one. I started when I was 17, and shortly after turning 18 I was given a keyholder position. I was thrown into the position with practically no instruction, and absolutely no training. I did my best even though I made mistakes, and I was actually doing fairly well. Time passes, I get back from a sleepover and my mother informs me that while I was gone, my grandfather had passed away. Now, I worked just two hours after I got the news, so I went in still struggling not to cry my eyes out at any second. The first thing I see is the store manager standing there looking annoyed. She takes me over to a bench out in the middle of the mall and sits with me, and starts telling me about all the things I'm doing wrong. All the things I hadn't been trained on, while I mostly just blankly stared at her and tried not to cry. I wasn't taking any of the information in at all. I was just too upset. Eventually she noticed and asked what was wrong, and I broke down and started sobbing and told her. I then asked if I could go home, as I didn't think I could work efficiently with this news. She told me absolutely not, and she left, leaving me completely alone in the store. Now for context, the store sold these stuffed animals called Beanie Boos. They also had giant versions that were about 40 to 50 a piece, I think. It's been years since I worked there. But anyway, some lady walked in and decided to buy four of those, and was ready to pay when I told her about a store close by that sold them for a cheaper price. She thanked me and left having not bought them. So there was my revenge for being rude and uncaring about his death. Then shortly after I found out from a friend and fellow keyholder that they had not only accused me of stealing a few dollar items, which I had not done, but they had also accused me of lying about my grandfather's death to get out of trouble. So in a fit of fury I called up the manager from before. Told her I quit, shut the store down two hours early and went home. Probably lost them about $500 in total sales that day, and proud of it. I know it's not much in the grand scheme of things, they make millions, but it made me feel better. I now have a picture of my grandfather hanging where I used to hang my store keys. The next story is... A mortgage, a bank account, and the petty revenge that took place over a decade. Back when I was 4-5, to five, my parents were living in a college town for 4 years while my dad finished his postdoc work at an Ivy League. The town was heavily college-based, being home to not only an Ivy League, but also a popular state school. He was being paid a mere pittance of what he could get in the private sector, but wanted to finish his research at a well-known university to help him get a better and higher level job when he was done. My mom had a great job in healthcare, so during the time they lived there and they purchased a house. My dad's research came to an end, and he started applying to jobs in the private sector, and secured one a few hours away. My parents originally were planning on renting but were convinced, and they both admit it was their mistake to follow this advice, by a realtor that the market was hot, and they would have no problem selling the house, so instead of renting until it sold, they decided to put in an offer on a house in the new area before selling the original house. Within a few weeks of them buying the house, in the new area the governor of the state at the time froze all state assistance to universities. Details are decades old, but something along the lines of whatever he did locked universities down, and they weren't hiring or expanding in any way, which immediately tanked the housing market in the original city, and my parents were stuck with an unsellable house. My parents now were paying two mortgages and it wasn't easy, nor really possible for them to do so. They somehow scraped by for two to three years. I don't remember these years as being lean because they did everything to hide it from us, but in hindsight they were lean, and both my parents went without a lot to shield us from it. But eventually, despite them both working full time, it wasn't working. For months, my parents tried to negotiate with the bank in any way possible to avoid foreclosure on the first house, and the bank repeatedly brushed them off and were unwilling to work out anything with them. Just told them to deal with it. Wasn't the bank's problem. Finally, they were at the end of any possible solution and contacted the bank to start the process of foreclosure on the first house. At that, immediately, the bank was like, what can we do to work with you to avoid this? Despite my parents trying for the better part of a year to work with them on a solution. That year caused them so much mental stress. Both my parents are proud, hardworking people, so I can only imagine what it did to them mentally. 
and now the bank was willing to work with them. That peeved them off. It was around this time a sort of miracle happened. My dad's company was relocating to the opposite coast and wanted him to relocate and head a department. He straight up told them his financial situation, about to foreclose on a house and flat broke, and they came back with an offer he couldn't refuse. The company would take over the responsibility of both houses for my parents and pay full relocation expenses, and I believe some amount of months rent to cover my mom finding a job, as it was a relocation to a much higher COLA area. Within a month or two of foreclosure negotiations this happened, and it's why my family moved to what I consider my hometown of SoCal from a small town in the middle of nowhere on the east coast. The first time my dad brought up at dinner his company wanted to move him, my mom and him laughed like it was the most ridiculous thing ever. And next I knew a few weeks later we were told after the school year ended we were moving. He called it the offer he couldn't refuse, obviously. Now on to the petty revenge. He was still super peeved at the bank they used that also held the mortgage they had on the first house, for how they treated them leading up to this. So when they were leaving the state instead of closing out their last account with them, he left $5 in a savings account and promptly forgot about it. The day he told me the story was about 10 years later, when the account was finally turned over to the state as unclaimed money, or something like that. After not updating the bank on a new address and receiving and ignoring all statements, and we're going to close your account statements and letters the whole time. He figured the bank spent way more than $5 over the years sending statements and trying to get a hold of him, and they effing deserved it. So petty and so effing glorious. The last story is, I was able to simultaneously gain a 30k per year pension for my mother while wiping my piece of SH father's retirement. My father is the Canadian Satan. Growing up with him was less than fun, and I can assure you based on witnessing it, he was a less than fun husband. I'd go on about what a piece of SH my father is, but instead I'll quote a judge. You're the most despicable human I've ever had in my courtroom, and that's coming from a family court judge. I read this winning endorsement of my dad's personality in the court documents I acquired related to his divorce with my mom. The same place I discovered the effery he had engaged in to steal from my mom. It's also where I found the information I needed to get one over on him so severely he's going to disinherit me. This is a bit of a long read, so TLDR at the bottom. A frame of reference about my father is that he's a pathological narcissist and behaves exactly how those people are compelled to act. They aren't generous people and punching them in the wallet is like a slap shot to the taint from Gretzky. He's kind of like Donkey from Shrek but also Joseph Stalin, a monstrous jack A. Chapter 1, Hosea 3.8 Those that sow the wind shall reap a whirlwind. Our actions always have consequences, and my padre has plenty to answer for. My attempts to hold him to account didn't jump to immediate jihad. They started with diplomacy and a therapist. About 10 months ago when our tale begins, I was going through some stuff. Stuff being a whole lot of PTSD related to both my dad's abuse and my job as a paramedic. He did a ton that affected me deeply, things that I needed to move past, along with all that other razzmatazz from 15 years of EMS. In so trying to move past and work through everything, I quit drinking, started turning my untreated PTSD into treated PTSD, and thinking having my dad involved might help me in our relationship. Well, I seriously effing misjudged that one, so you'll probably be unsurprised to hear that conversation went swimmingly. I'll spare you the lurid detail, but when I broached the subject with him, our back and forth degenerated into visceral hate with him screaming at me that I'm a failed paramedic, liar, and piece of SH alcoholic. While I have a certain pride about my job, I have more pride in my 14 months sobriety, so hearing this from my old man might have caused me to behave a bit psychotically. I got right peeved off at him and decided to dig up every bit of dirt I could to see what kind of man he actually is and has been. When it was convenient, I hopped in the mystery machine before taking a trip to the courthouse to unleash my inner gumshoe. Everything is public record, so I bulk bought copies before retiring to my easy chair to read, plot, and pet my white long-haired cat. For good measure, I obtained a file of divorce document from my mother. Soon enough, I hit upon a line of inquiry worth following up on. It seems that during the final settlement of my parents' divorce, 2002, my mother was awarded one-third of my father's employment pension. She was a stay-at-home mother and could not earn one herself, so it was given to her by a judge. Mighty effing strange because my father, as he brags, took a nearly full pension and retired a bit early. No way that A-hat was living the last 10 years after retiring early on a 2-3 pension. He isn't constantly being about it. So I asked my mother if she was collecting a pension from his job, or had cashed out the value, 100k plus at the time. 20 years ago, no to both questions. Well that's interesting, I wonder if that's collectible on, and what 20 years of compound interest from a pension fund makes it worth. Well I did eventually find out along with the fact that my dear old dad had been collecting my mother's portion for 10 years, in hilariously open violation of a legal order from a judge. Why didn't my mother pursue this sooner? 
A combination of being unable to afford a lawyer, being his victim for 20 years, and pessimism after so much of his continued dodging obligation to the order. She just quit. There is effectively no statute of limitations he could hide behind, because the wording of the settlement, insofar as I could tell I had him dead to rights, and my mother would be collecting, it would be a slam dunk. I just needed to hire a lawyer to help me, so I set out to find the most unbalanced, bloodthirsty psychotic who passed the bar exam. Chapter 2 Et tu, pension lady? As it says in the good book, screw unto others as they would screw unto you. So that's what I set out to do. The misanthropic sociopath I hired for legal counsel suggested we send a demand letter to the pension office to try and remedy it before filing what would undoubtedly be an easy win for him. I agreed in spirit and instead phoned up the pension office and got put through to the woman managing my father's file. Well, she was a delight and it was a trivial matter for me to get her to loathe my dad. We talked for 45 minutes and I swear if you'd given me another hour, I could have convinced her to suicide bomb his house. In all our conversations about life, families, and relationships, we got down to some things of note. Since I could show her correspondence her office had sent to my father, CC'd my mum on, some years ago and ongoing for five consecutive years, trying to resolve this matter, which he had ignored, she was more than willing to start the process on remedy immediately. Full cooperation from this lady in her office was a matter of merely providing documentation, and with my lawyer on retainer, this office was beyond asking my father to comply. They complied for him. About two months since I last spoke to my father and he now had no idea his pension was about to take a serious hit. Below I'm going to break down how big a turd I put into his bowl of ice cream. My mother's portion was made whole and adjusted to reflect that her portion was brought to maturity and beyond, so his early retirement doesn't affect her fund. So he loses 10 years of valuation to her. He also retired 3 years early, which knocks him down now to 17 years of pension valuation, not 27. If you'd forgotten my dad had been collecting my mom's money and was overpaid by 30k per year for the last 10 years. Like I said, mom was made whole, so the pension company is going to claw back that overpayment from the base valuation of his current pension fund. I'm not exactly sure what that does to the number, but it effectively nerfs my old man's private retirement fund. He's got government old age pension that he took early too. Whoops. My dad did some awful SH to me, but I only had to suffer 17 years of him. My mom still has the high score at 20. As much as I did this for spite and malicious glee, I did do it to give my mom a chance at a proper retirement. Chapter 3. Glitter Bombs of Justice My mother started collecting her pension about three months after I contacted the pension office, and to celebrate she bought tickets to New Zealand for the family for Christmas, so we can see our relatives. I was able to get most of my retainer from the lawyer back, and to celebrate I went online to order a glitter bomb. I was able to ship it to my old man anonymously from another country. God bless the USA. I heard through my sister he opened it up in his stupid red Miata. Haha, <laughs> he'll never get rid of it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a nice day.